Well, welcome to Ask the AD, Mark Daniels and Terry Mahajer. Uh, let's kick things off. How about a great basketball win last night against West Virginia? Here we are, a uh, basketball team. The men are 3-3 three and three in conference play. It was a great night last it's night. It's exciting. You know what? The students came out big last night. They continue to do so. But I, as you see this year, you never know what's going to happen in the college basketball game in the Big 12. So you've got to come out and support the team. Everybody, the, every gym across the Big 12 is, is packed, and uh, I think the home crowd can really make the difference, and you're seeing that when we play at home. Yeah, we had three crowds, about 9,000. How proud are you uh, of Johnny and the staff and the team to kind of jump in and compete wins over Kansas and Texas and competitive in the first third of the schedule? Well, we're very extremely proud of the, the team he's put together in this new age of college athletics, and especially in college basketball. Um, you know, the transfer portal was started because of college basketball at one time, and, and I think Johnny's doing the best he can to navigate through it. Um, you know, when, when I first got here, I don't think the basketball program was quite resourced the way it needed to be. And we spent a lot of time and effort and, and, and a lot of money uh, trying to uh, gather up private support to add to men's basketball. And I think you've seen some of the fruits of our labor. Um, you know, I think Johnny's had some staff members, um, continues to uh, recruit at a really high level, as you've seen some of the recent uh, commits uh, here. And uh, I think uh, really we got, a, we got a really good opportunity to, be, to make some noise in this league. And don't forget, we've also put $12 million of private dollars into the Edition Financial Arena and the venue to help enhance uh, the basketball experience for our student-athletes. So we've gone through the fall uh, uh, in the Big 12. We're in the winter sports, spring sports, so we're almost about halfway through. Kind of assess uh, UC, uh, UCF, the Big 12, how we've competed and how the league is kind of developing a personality. I, I think I think we've competed in every sport. I really have. Um, I think you've seen that. We're, 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 you know, we've competed in the first half of women's basketball right now. This year, right now, we're, we're struggling a little bit. But I will tell you this, the women's basketball team was the most decimated when Satya Messer, Coach Messer, came here. Um, she, all of her players left that I, I would say the transfer portal probably hurt her team more than any. And you're seeing her recruit at a very high level, giving national recruits. The Big 12 is really good in basketball, as you know. And, uh, you know, I think you're going to see her. Uh, I think we need to, just need to be patient. Uh, and she's assembled a really good staff and they're recruiting a high level. Uh, other than that, I think we're going to compete in every sport. I really do. I feel very good about our baseball program. Uh, you know, uh, softball, uh, well, the, the proof is in the pudding, obviously. Um, rowing this year. We've got a new coach this year in rowing, and, you know, Texas has won the national championship two of the last three years. Um, so, and our, I think our golf programs are very well. And our, and our, our tennis has started out very good. They're undefeated, and our women's tennis team just beat uh, a ranked Georgia Tech team this past Saturday. So, um, you know, I think, I don't think people realize uh, what resources really do to help infuse um, programs. And I think they do equate with wins. Now, does that mean the, the, the most resource teams always win? No, that's not. That's not the case. Um, but I think that we still have to compete and do things that the other teams in the league are doing and that we're getting there. And remember, we're still half share members of, of the Big 12. And I think people need to know that. And we're, we're this year and next year, we're going to be half share members. Um, and the, the Pac-12 teams that are coming in are full share members. Let's talk, if we can, a, a yeah. little bit more on the business yeah. side. As you begin to work your way from a budget standpoint and as, yeah. you know, as you plan on that side, what's that process like? How do you work to close that gap so that you are competing with everybody else in the league on a level playing field? Yeah, I mean, I, I know people have heard me say this before, but we are going down four parallel tracks, and they are equally as important. We've got the facility side of – we've got personnel – We've got operating budget, and then we've got recruiting, which is our collective and NIL. And so, um, you know, we're, we're behind. We're, 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 we're competing against schools that have been playing sports since the 1800s. And uh, the business side is you're, we're going to show this year. Last year we show, showed a huge surplus. You're going to see an NCA report that comes out this year that, uh, that uh, shows us that we're, our, it's a budget report. It's not a financial statement. It's a budget report. It shows that we had uh, our expenses – uh, exceeded our, our revenues by 3.5 million, uh, and you know those are stuff that 
I think people are going to react to. But we got to continue to resource. They're not, we're not spending crazy amount of monies here. We're just trying to operate and, and, and compete at this level. But you also, as people sometimes may not know, you got money moving. You, you got yeah. exit fees. You got entry fees. Yeah. You got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, so it's not like it's, uh, yeah, oh, so here's got, this big pot of gold yes. that you're going to Big 12. You get a half, you get a half share <laughs> member. And because of the new, because of the new members that are coming in, we've already, we're already, even though we had a five-year performer, a five-year projection, we're already experiencing dilution yeah. because of the new members. We have, you know, $18 million exit fee. We had an entry fee. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so we also inherited some other operating uh, debt from, uh, from years past before I got here. And so we've got to pay off, our, uh, you know, we, we've got to pay off a lot of different things. And uh, we're trying to navigate through all that. However, we still are doing outstanding in our fundraising. We've got, we've had three years in a row, I believe, is fundraising records, ticket sales records. We're going to continue that trajectory. But after a while, you're going to run out of inventory. So how do you make up those deficits? Philanthropic dollars, donor dollars. So our charge on fund staff is out there talking to as many folks as they can. We, we say activity leads to productivity. They, they get tired of me saying that. But we're out there. We're talking to a lot of folks. They're doing a great job. We just need, we just need, to, we just need a wider net, more, more donors. Let's talk about partners. Yeah. Orange County uh, uh, has stepped up, and the process goes back to the summer and to the fall and finalized recently with the commissioner's vote um, about money coming to UCF. How does it impact the facilities, the different projects, what gets prioritized now, and how does UCF benefit from what will come with that? Well, we're looking, always looking for new revenues, and we're trying to turn over every rock to find uh, new revenues. Well, that was something I did when I first got here. I met with some of the civic leaders and discussed any revenue opportunities with you know, the hotel tax or any type of, you know, any type of grants. And I was informed that there's a uh, TTT opportunity. Uh, we, president approved that we could go for it. He said those three wonderful words, go for it. And he even allowed us to use some of his staff. And it took about eight months and we were able to get a grant. And why is this grant important for our athletics department? Because obviously it is to help us build the infrastructure of our athletic department. And when we look at real estate as an athletic department, the tower, the Roth Tower, is probably the most uh, is generates the most revenue of all of our real estate in the athlete, in the athletic department. We're packed at the gills right now. We need to expand. We have waiting lists. We need to generate more revenue. And you look at the Big Twelve right now. I believe almost every school in the Big Twelve has either built new stadiums or renovated their their uh, towers or their premium areas to generate more revenue. Well, we need to do the same thing because we can't build enough suites or enough club seats to build the type of tower that we want. So having a grant for our, from our county, Orange County, will help us put us on the fast track to generate money quicker and re retire that debt. Well, uh, there's always something going uh, as far as building projects at uh, UCF. So, so kind of walk us through uh, the towers you just touched on, what yeah. it's going to bring. And I know fans kind of wondered, is there space for me? But, it, yeah. you know, a, a, as new premium opportunities yeah. open up, it kind of shifts some people around. So how do you kind of visualize what the stadium is going to end up being? Yeah, I think most people look at uh, the when you build new premium areas, those are for a, a different class of people, whatever people say. I've heard all kinds of different comments. Really what it does for you is it creates more entry-level seating for you. And we're trying to keep our ticket prices as the most affordable ticket price in America. And right now, I believe they are. I know we have the lowest ticket price, entry level ticket price in the Big 12. And we're trying to keep that. Well, as as we build new premium areas, it allows everybody to move up in their experience, especially the people that have been here for a while. So the people that were regular season tickets, they moved in the Carl Black uh, cabanas. Now they're, then they have suddenly started buying more club seats. Now people then graduated to the suites if they had that need. So now we're going to have some premium products that are unique. And, and, and very indigenous to uh, the state of Florida and to the central uh, part of Florida. And so we're going to create some really cool experiences for people, and they're going to uh, and, and, and keep it at a very affordable price. We're doing a survey right now, and I think a lot of people that are ticket, ticket holders received a survey from CSO, it's a, which is a subsidiary of Legends Sports. Um, and uh, we're just trying to gauge people's um, thoughts. And, and you know, we're, it, it's no, no way a, 
a uh, when you're looking at pricings that those are the what we're going to charge. We're, it's just we're just trying to find out what what the price points are would be best at, and we we we're trying to create our performance uh, because we do have to pay for the stadium. We have debt. We also have operating budgets that we also trying to enhance as well. Regarding facilities, Roth Tower and the Hagel Gateway uh, project, give folks an idea, at least timeline, when they may begin to see some things happening. Well, I think. Since we've got the grant from the TDT, you're going to see we, we're in full schematic design right now. And we go schematic design, and then we'll go to DDs. This is all we have a whole Gantt chart planned. We're we're planning to have this tower open in 26. Um, that was the idea. Um, there's a lot of governance things we still have to work through, um, but that's you'll start seeing some construction or not construction. You'll start seeing some movement maybe this fall mm -hmm. for the 24 season and the 25 season. So hopefully we'll have this. We'll build around the tower. So when once the 26 season starts, uh, that'll be up and running in full operational. Regarding the Sharon and Mark Hagel Gateway, aka football campus, you're going to start seeing some movement this spring. Uh, you're going to see the west side field move over to the east side. You're going to see some uh, parking areas being moved out, cleared out, and, and build. start looking at building the promenade. This will allow us to build the operation center and the McNamara Code for the future. We still have some governance processes to go through for the operation center and the McNamara Code, and we're still fundraising for that as well. So um, people that are interested in getting involved, please contact uh, Mark Wright and our charge on fund. And uh, we've got, we got some great plans and I think it'll be a very exciting project. And I know a lot of people have, uh, have wanted to see this project go. And uh, I think we're getting close to the finish line. We just got to, we, we got we need a couple more big gifts to get the operations center done and the, and the McNamara Cove. But in the meantime, you'll see some movement.